Think what a great thing it is to be a part of something that is the team, the team, the team, the team. Let's talk about bunting. Now bunting can be pretty complex because there's more than one right way to do it. And there's actually more than one kind of bunt because bunting can have different purposes. I want to try to simplify this as much as possible and get it so that everyone feels as comfortable as possible to bunt because it's a skill, it's a very valuable skill that I'd like everyone to be able to successfully accomplish. So when we bunt, everyone is pretty much going to be the same from the waist up. But I will allow for some variance from the waist down so people can be comfortable. Everyone will start in their typical batting stance. So they're, they're, they want their feet in the same position. They want it to look like they're going to swing. So you go up there think, pretending that you're going to swing. When the pitcher's hands separate, that's when we can do what's called squaring to bunt. And whenever you turn your body toward the pitcher, that's like squaring toward them, getting, getting yourself square is the term that we use. Um, so as those hands separate, we've got to find a way to get our shoulders square toward the pitcher. We will, and as we're doing that, we're going to slide our hand up the handle to the, like, the top of the handle just before the barrel gets completely widened out. We're going to pinch with our thumb and our index finger. We never want fingers in front of the bat while we're bunting. They can get hit by the ball. So we'll just pinch. We'll go from this position to that. So that if the ball happens to hit where we're trying to bunt, it's going to do minimal or no damage. So how do we get squared around? Well, with our lower body, we have a number of options. And what we'll do is we'll work with everyone to find the option that they like best. For instance, Coach Eric grew up playing baseball. And he learned to square completely around shoulders and hips. This is a great way to bunt. It gives you excellent balance. It gives you a really good view of the ball. The two challenges are, some players are already a little nervous about bunting, about having to square their shoulders to the pitcher, and the thought of squaring their entire body to the pitcher makes some players a little nervous to the point where it might hinder their success. The other challenge is that we are not allowed to step out of the batter's box when our bat is making contact with the ball. The batter's box being these two lines here. And if we square our entire body around, which means, we're, which means picking up our back foot, pivoting off our front foot, stepping like this, we have to be very careful not to step over this line. Now in our games, this line will be imaginary, but we still want to, we always want to respect the rules, and we want to try to stay in where we think the line would be, which is about six inches from home plate. So that is another challenge. Now I'm not saying it doesn't mean that you shouldn't fully square, because like I said, it's, a, it's an excellent way to butt, but you just have to be careful to keep your knees about shoulder width apart and not further. Because if you widen that stance, you're gonna step on the plate, you're gonna step out of the box, and if you make contact with the ball, you can be called out in that situation for breaking the rule. Another way to square to bunt would be much more like your regular swing, where you lift the back heel, you rotate the hips, but the feet stay in this position, much like when we swing away, but instead we square to bunt. So that is another way to square to bunt. You will notice some tension on that back knee because it's just not a very natural 
uh, position to be in, but it can be very effective, and it might give you a little more confidence than being completely squared around. There are two other ways as well. You can pick up your back foot, bring it back a little. You can pick up, pick up your front foot and bring it back a little. This is kind of a nice uh, compromise between squaring fully, where you do have a little bit better view of the ball, and you're very unlikely to step out of the box because your back foot stays put. Now, whichever way you end up using with your lower body, from the waist up, we're all going to be about the same. So that if we square, we're going to have the barrel of the bat higher than the handle of the bat. And this allows us a better chance to bunt the ball on the ground. We don't want it level. We definitely don't want the barrel lower than the handle. We're trying to get that ball onto the ground as quickly as we possibly can. You never want to try to have a bunt travel very far in the air. We're also going to keep our elbows fairly close to our body. We don't want to be extended out like this. So if we squared the bunt, got the bat angled, elbows close, we're going to keep a great eye on the ball, and we're going to adjust our height using our knees. We don't want to be wiggling the bat around. You'll just lose a lot of control that way. Be a lot more likely to miss it or pop it up. We'll just bend the knees, and then we just give a very gentle tap forward where the handle of the bat will come a little closer, the barrel will go out a little further, and we'll tap that ball the direction we're trying to get it. And that's how we bunt. It's going to be challenging, but we're going to practice it frequently, and I'm confident that everyone has the capability to do it with repetition. Everyone will get better. We'll find the way for everyone's lower body to be the most comfortable. We'll make sure we have the bat at the right angle, and we'll have a lot of fun. It's really fun to bunt, surprise the defense, sprint down to first, often help teammates move up. There are a lot of fun and exciting uses for a bunt. And I'm looking forward to helping everyone get to the point where they can bunt in a scrimmage or a game. I'll see you next time.